Greetings YouTube! So today we are back with some more news and Nuzlocke, where we are going to discuss, you know, news that you possibly missed this week that I find particularly interesting. And while we're doing that, we're going to be attempting a Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke. Now, I've already made a mistake in the past and killed, you know, one of the few opportunities that I had to catch Pokemon. It would have been a really good Pokemon to have, but, uh, you know, hashtag no regrets or something along those lines. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be hopping on in. We are pretty close to facing the first gym leader. I uh, grinded some off stream just that way you guys didn't have to sit through and watch. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get ready to hop over into that. And I'm going to go bring this closer to this direction. We're going to go like this. We're going to come over like this. Oh, that's going to be annoying. Okay, uh, let me think real quick. Actually. Nope, okay, we're good. Alrighty, so let's take a peek at Pokemon real quick. So, speaking of the Pokemon, this is where we're at. We have Pickle is level 12, Shadow is level 11, uh, Spice is level 15, and, uh, Suck is level 5. And, uh, it seems like, uh, Twitch just managed to keep messing with my wife's stream, so she, uh, she not going to, you know, maybe be tuned in as much as she typically does, but, uh, I'm hoping it's okay for the rest of you guys. But, we're going to start off first and foremost with what I think is possibly the biggest news of the week. Um, you know, it definitely, it feels like it should be the biggest news of the week, if it's not. But, uh, Sony acquires Bungie for $3.6 billion. The, uh, you know, you could basically pull from, you know... Every news organization, the same thing as with, um, you know, the Activision and Blizzard being acquired by Microsoft. You know, you could basically pick up that news wherever. But um, I'm specifically, I was looking at Michael McWerther, McWerther, over at Polygon, and uh, yeah, so it basically goes to the tune of Sony went out and spent 3.6 billion dollars to buy Bungie. But then, according to Bungie themselves, you know, in statements released after the fact, kind of dispelling, you know, worry of fans that, hey, you know, Bungie, part of their deal is that they get to stay multi-platform, they get to keep putting out their games where they choose to put out their games, which is interesting. That's not something we really see um, from any of Sony studios or that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, it's definitely something that you know, has got a bunch of interest. You know, it's it's a interesting um, move, just in the fact of, you know, we kind of have been thinking back and forth on just, you know, people talking about, oh, you know, what is, um, what is Sony going to do to counter? And... You know, this is a little early for Sony to have actually countered just because from all the information and reports coming out, it uh, sounds like this deal has been about, you know, I think the reports I was seeing was two to three months in the making, so, you know, this was something that had been happening well before that other deal was being looked at, or, you know, well after the news. And, uh, you, you know, it's very much this interesting one of, it's like, okay, you know, uh, what is the point of picking up Bungie if you're going to let them continue to put Destiny on all platforms? And so according to a lot of the reports and that kind of stuff that have been coming out, it basically comes down to the fact that Sony acknowledges that they don't have um, good 
games as a service games. They don't have good live service games on their platform. And so, you know, this kind of comes actually to a story that we have later that I'll kind of hop into right now just because I feel like it connects. But um, Sony said, you know, during a press release that they want to launch 10 live service games by fiscal year 2025, which is, which fiscal year 2025 ends March 31st, 2026. And that's according to Rebecca Smith over at PlayStation Life, who she's just, you know, reporting on the statements that they told to investors and that kind of stuff during their uh, quarterly meetings. And so it's one of those interesting ones that it's like, okay, so originally when this came out, I was very firmly of the mind that there's no way Bungie is worth $3.6 billion. Because, you know, you sit here and you're like, oh, Bungie, you know, like, looking at their big stuff, it's like, okay, they got Destiny, which they've been working on for eight years now. And then before that, they did Halo, which, you know, they don't own the rights to Halo. They can't do any Halo thing over on Sony. You know, there's no chance of it popping up over there. And so it kind of comes down more more so that they're just, they're buying a team that is tried and true and has proven that they can do live service games and do them well, you know. Like I said, Bungie has been doing uh, Destiny in some form, whether it be Destiny or Destiny 2, for eight years now. And, you know, while, you know, you can like Destiny or hate Destiny, you know, like, it has been extremely successful for eight years. And so it's kind of an interesting thing seeing them um, investing in Bungie, not only because, you know, they they want, you know, to get their fingers in, you know, that kind of games as a service, but they're also hoping that they can help other studios kind of teach and develop in how to do it successfully. And so I think it's going to be really interesting kind of seeing what exactly, you know, comes of the fact that you know, Sony went out and acquired Bungie, and, you know, I, I think that caught a lot of people by surprise. It wasn't something that I think many people expected. You know, you, after the Activision Blizzard acquisition by Microsoft, a lot of people were discussing, you know, like, oh, you know, can Sony go get uh, Ubisoft? Can they get, you know, Square Enix? Can we get Capcom, Sega, that kind of thing? And so, you know, at this point, it's being reported, um, you know, by varying sources that I believe it was also at that investors conference, the fact that Sony is expected to make more acquisitions and that they have about eight to ten billion dollars to spend over the next two years with acquisitions. To which I raise the question, who can they get for eight to ten billion dollars that's still standing, you know, because you look at, you know, some of the bigger studios and you think, okay, Square Enix. No way Square Enix is getting bought for 8 to 10. You know, you hop over to Capcom. Like, maybe, but Capcom would have to have, like, some really bad press or PR or something going on. Like, I don't think even Capcom is down there. And so that leaves, in my head, you know, like, the bigger possible one is, okay, maybe they go get Sega. But I don't think that Sega is one that you know, necessarily makes too much of a... of an anything, really, for what Sony's looking to do. You know, I don't think that Sega brings anything further to their studios. And so I think that that would be a really weird one for them to go out and spend a bunch of money on doing. And... So I, I kind of see it as they're going to have to look for a smaller publisher, you know, along the lines of, like, a, uh, a Bungie or that kind of thing, where it's, you know, it's a, it's a game studio that, like, is big enough and is independent, but not one of those, like, major publishers. I don't think they're going to be able to get a major publisher. I think that it's going to be, you know, along the lines of what we typically see from Sony, which is them buying developers, not so much publishers. And so, you know, along those lines, we kind of hop over to 
you know, just other, you know, rumblings in the video game sphere. And so, one of the news stories coming out this week that I found to be of some interest was the fact that uh, Star Wars Eclipse, which is the new Star Wars game being worked on by Quantic Dream, who are the people that did Heavy Rain, Indigo Prophecy, and Detroit Become Human, amongst other games, have said that they, um, they are, and so, you know, granted, I am going to preface this by saying that the source for this is a, um, fairly credible, uh, Twitter account who has a lot of experience with, uh, video game leaks and that kind of stuff. Uh, one of their, you know, examples of a leak that they reported was they were reporting and, like, put out, like, screenshots and that kind of stuff for this actual Star Wars Eclipse before it was even unveiled at, um, the Game Awards. And so, you know, like, fairly credible, you know, take it with a, a grain of salt, if you will. But, um, the Twitter user is account NGT. And so what happened was they tweeted out that, so everything they know about Star Wars Eclipse is that it's supposed to be an action-adventure game based on interactive storytelling in an open world. And that um, one of Quantic Dream's, sep Quantic Dream's separate units is working on a multiplayer and um, that, like, the uh, main studio is the one that's kind of working on a lot of their story and that kind of stuff. Um, it was, according to, you know, this person still, it was reported that it started development in early 2021. And so, you know, this is a game that we're not going to be seeing anytime soon. But, you know, it's definitely one, I think, a... I think a lot of people are curious to kind of see what this game is going to be just because you know typically their games that they put out are very much you know um if you took a telltale game and gave it a budget you know it's just very choice based kind of i don't want to say linear but you know it's not open world games like they're saying this one's going to be and so it's just um it's something quite interesting to see a studio kind of stretching their wings like this. Uh, speaking of stretching their wings, uh, Game of the Year last year for the Game Awards, kind of sticking with the Game Awards right now, It Takes Two is getting a movie adaptation or TV series. This is according to Joe Otterson over at Variety. And um, the head of the studio behind It Takes Two has basically discussed that they're currently, you know, partnered with and, you know, kind of, you know, hearing offers from different studios um, just as to, you know, what the possibility of, you know, another form of media for this game would be. Um, and so it kind of sounds like there's a little bit of a bidding war going on behind the scenes to see, you know, A, what it is, and B, who's doing it. You know, like, is this going to be a series on Netflix? Is it going to be, you know, a movie on HBO? You know, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what exactly is going to be going on along those lines. But it's very, very interesting to kind of see... A relatively smaller studio getting the chance to you know do a different form of media like this because you know you typically you associate like super big massive games with the games that manage to you know get uh, video game movies or that kind of stuff made out of them and so Twitch is asking, which form do you think would serve it best? So I could see... I think what could be really interesting is either A, do like a cartoony, like animated 
where you're doing like 20 minute episodes and each of the episodes is them like getting through one of the levels from the game basically um you know maybe stretch it up to 30 and just kind of have that be how you break it up either that or i think i think honestly the primary way i could see it being done is i think it would make just a um, just a really solid you know movie i think you give it that hour and a half you know maybe two hours and just you know sit there and work on telling the story you know just kind of running them through the levels kind of crazy kind of wild um i think the only thing with that is it honestly is a fairly long game so i don't know how well i don't know i i think if you got the right people doing it you could definitely have success with a movie i feel like the tv series or like the series route is definitely the safer bet just to make sure you're able to kind of get all the content my only worry with that is people you know kind of saying like oh you know there wasn't enough to actually do a series or that kind of thing um and then you know um kind of along the lines of just uh you know stuff getting reported for more series you know more um You know, just more getting added to them. We had the Dark Pictures, which is kind of a series being made by the people who did um, Until Dawn. They are... They've been doing the Dark Pictures, which has kind of been a series of mini-games, I guess I would say. I think they're, they're typically about three to four hour experiences set in the horror genre where you can play them multiplayer with you know different people playing as different characters and making decisions and choices and it changes the narrative of kind of how the game goes and that kind of stuff and originally when that was announced they were going to be doing um they were going to be doing eight and they have done so they've done three so far with the fourth one already being uh, teased, you know, we got a trailer for it already. And now they're saying that they have uh, six more that they are, you know, they have currently gone through the process of getting trademarks on the names and that kind of stuff. So, you know, they're on the process of doing these. And so, you know, how many of these actually make it? Who knows, you know, we could have all of them or we could, you know end up with, you know, a bunch of them getting canned, you know, if they're not successful enough, that kind of thing. So I'm going to run through, because I found some of these names interesting, just because I think that, you know, some of them kind of give you a hint as to what exactly they could be. Um, so we have the first one is... And I, I don't know if these are in any particular order, or if this is just, you know, when they had names and they sent them out. Um, so, chat is asking real quick what the concept for the new one is, and I think what I might do... Um, I don't actually have it set up. I was gonna say, maybe I might watch that trailer with you guys. Uh, what I might do is towards the end, maybe we'll, um, oh goodness, I am not as high leveled as I wanted to be for this. Oh no. Okay. So I got one down so far. That's good, that's good. I'm really worried. <laughs> it goes level 15, alright. It goes trying to learn rollout. Alright, that's totally cool. Let's delete a move, yep. Alright, so we're going to get rid of Tail Whip. Because I think Defense Curl could come in handy later. But, uh, so, yeah, so if we... I might swing back around and kind of see, um, about watching that trailer with you guys, just because I do think that this fourth one looks really good, and I think it has, like, a super solid trailer. 
Another Geodude. Okay. I was, I was kind of hoping to fight the big bad right now, because I'm super worried about uh, Nospass. Nospass? Nosepass? I don't know. We'll see him in just a sec. Um, I'll probably do that right after I fight this gym leader. Unless, you know, she ends my whole career right here with this Pokemon. But, um, for the names, we have Switchback, Directive 8020, The Craven Man, Intercession, Winterfold, and Odeth. And so I am really curious, please just one-shot him. One-shot him. Oh no. Oh, I am not leveled enough for this. Okay, and I can't swap him out now. This is a nightmare, guys. This is a nightmare. Can I get a crit, please? Uh, okay, please don't hurt that bad. Please don't hurt that bad. Oh my god, it crit on the first time? And he's got a fucking berry. There are hacks happening over here, chat. I am so upset. I am so upset right now. Okay, he hardened, that's okay. I'm gonna hit him with a special attack move anyways. So theoretically that harden shouldn't have done anything. Yeah, it seems like we're just fine. I think I'm going to, I think I'm gonna give him a potion. I wanna be safe, I wanna make sure the pickle is okay. We hit him with a potion right now and then we'll see about, oh, we got a tackle. That's lovely, that's real lovely. This has kind of been weird for me because I feel like I'm so used to uh, this this Pokemon just like straight up going through that one move. She's about to potion right here. It's okay, whatever. Get 20. Oh my god, that I feel like that healed so much more than 20 health. Oh man, let's hope that I'm faster than him and I can get one more hidden before. Oh my gosh, a second potion? What the fuck is happening, chat? This is... I'm supposed to be talking about the news, but I'm stressed out of my mind. Alright, so... Yeah, anyways, going back to the dark pictures, and... God, my anxiety. Like, I'm so low on health, and I should probably take a potion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna take the potion. Take this hit. I just... I need a critical. Like, one critical, and I am fine. I'm out of this fight. Come on, give it to me. Just give me a crit, please. We're so close. Oh, okay. We're good. We're out of here. We're out of here. We're done. That was... I did not grind up as much as I needed to. That was stressful. Guys, I am so upset. I am so upset right now. Okay. So we're getting back to the Dark Pictures Anthology. And... So I'm really interested, particularly in... I think Directive 8020 sounds super interesting to me. I think the Craven Man sounds interesting. And then obviously I'm curious about Odeth. I think Winterfold also could be a pretty... Like that just like... I'm imagining, you know, just like... You know, trailer. At the end of a really good trailer and you just have Winterfold pop up. And I think that that could be really cool. I think the only ones I'm not necessarily the most like intrigued by the name is Switchback and Intercession. So, I'm really curious to see. I think the one that I, I find the most interesting is that Directive 8020. Like, I feel like a, um, like, you tell me Directive 8020, and my head immediately goes to, like, a, like, I'm thinking, like, Cold War, Russian sleeper agents and something goes wrong and you're like stuck in an underground bunker where you know a Russian sleeper agent is like going through killing everybody or something along those lines that's that's what directive 8020 sounds like to me and you know obviously I could sit here and I could spend more time and you know come up with a cooler concept but like I feel like directive 8020 definitely gives me like um like, that's, that's military something, you know? And I think, you know, like, highly trained killer in just, like, a regular, you know, like, base with, like, scientists and that kind of thing, and you're, like, playing as the scientist trying to get out. Or maybe you were other 
maybe you're other sleeper agents and you don't like know you they haven't said you're like key code words or whatever and so you don't know what's going on you don't have memories and you're just trying to get out while this other guy's like killing everybody that could be interesting all right so we're going to save right here i'm going to try and pull up the trailer real quick for you guys all right we're gonna minimize that over here. Alright, so we're going to go if I can find this trailer really quick. Okay, so I got it pulled up over here. Go full screen. I'm gonna hop over. Wrong one. All right, so I think if I go like this, Yep, I think we got it. Now the question is, how is the volume going to be over here? I'm hoping it'll be good, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in over on my tablet real quick. That way I can have a better control of the volume. There we go. All right. Let's see how this goes. This is... Um, I don't think you guys can actually see. I'm going to... What I'll do... Gotta, gotta fix this up for you guys. Alright, so, this is the Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil in Me. Peggy 18. I don't think we're supposed to be having a Oh, why is it showing like that? You... All right, here, we pause this because for some reason, I got, okay, there we go. For some reason, it was coming up weird. All right, here we go. Peggy 18. You want to know what it means to be a killer? Think of the most profound thing you've ever done. The most beautiful thing you've ever created. And I promise you, it's nothing compared to watching the life bleed out of someone. To see the fear in their eyes. To feel them pawing at you for release. To hear them pleading, begging. That's true art. That's what you have to be, an artist. I've left my mark on the world. Have you? Alrighty. So, yeah, that was... That was the Dark Pictures Anthology. Uh, Devil Inside Me. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's their end to Season 1. And they are going to, I guess, be doing Season 2 with 6 rather than 4. Which I think is kind of interesting. Okay. 
turn my volume down for this now. Yeah. Alrighty. But yeah, so that is uh, what their last game is looking like. And I think, honestly, it looks pretty good. I think that, you know, it definitely... It hits me with, you know, some kind of spooky vibes. I definitely think that it's got potential to be the strongest of the ones that they've done so far. Alright, so now going through, checking what other news I have. Okay, so this one I specifically pulled for, uh... Oh, we gotta get out of the way. Uh, so this one I specifically pulled for Patrick, because I know he is, you know, quite the Battlefield uh, 2042 fan. And, uh... So on top of refusing to tell investors how much money uh, Battlefield uh, 2042 had made, they also reported to investors during their uh, you know quarterly investment call that uh, that Battlefield 22 or 2042's sales were disappointing. And this is uh, kind of written down by Marie DeLisandri over at GamesIndustry.biz. And, um, you know, they go on to say that, you know, 2042 had some launch issues, you know, there were, it had problems, but just in general they were disappointed with its numbers and how it performed. Um, so I think it's going to be kind of an interesting one just to see where they go with it. Alright, so Route 115. We don't have any Route 115s yet. So... Alright. We go 115. Throw it over my notes real quick. Alrighty. Let's see, I'm pretty sure there's a spot where you can get Pokemon up here. Right? Am I wrong? I swore there was grass up here. Man, if I wrote that down, and there's not even... I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed, guys. Alright, I found a super potion, whatever. That's so sad. Alright, I'll make sure to delete that in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I think that it is kind of an interesting thing to see, you know, how... You know, we have these occasions where, you know, uh, first-person shooters and these multiplayer games are having a bunch of success, you know, looking over at the success that Halo has had and looking at the continued success that Call of Duty has managed to have every year. And I feel like it's kind of frustrating because I feel like Battlefield tries to do different, like, unique things, and it just always ends up, you know, trying, but then it doesn't... It doesn't just, you know, get any of the benefits or the rewards. Like, I I don't really feel like, for the most part, um, Battlefield is, you know, playing with a whole bunch of success. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay. I, I can do this. Ninkata, that's fine. That's totally fine. Alright, Pickle, probably not you. Let's do Shadow. Shadow, you're my lower guy. Alright, so we are gonna get... Man, we are sitting there, we got two bug Pokemon. That's a little rough, but whatever. It'll be fine. And so, you know, I, I feel like... Oof. We're getting hit. I feel like I'm very curious to see what Battlefield continues to do if they you know continue trying to find an identity or if they just they try and go for more of that um you know if they try and become like a call of duty clone and just like you know take off some of its success because it really does feel like um they're just not finding it and it's kind of unfortunate but you know that's it's one of those that I feel slightly less bad about it just because it is EA, and so like if I had to choose it would definitely be to have Halo do good, though you know, I wouldn't necessarily be rooting for Call of Duty, but um, I don't know, it was just kind of surprising because 
they, there was a lot of talk last year about how, oh, you know, we have three big first-person shooter games being launched. And, you know, we were looking at Halo, Call of Duty, and, you know, Battlefield 2042. Okay, what do we nickname him? Yes, we will nickname him. So... I, so this is more so for his evolution. But, like, he turns into, like, a ninja hornet. And so I think that, uh, I think Weeboo is a good name for him. We're gonna name him Weeboo. But, you know, I, I don't know how much more there is to say about Battlefield 2042. You know, I think that it's unfortunate. It hasn't done well. There's been lots of talks about, you know, EA tabling the Battlefield franchise in general just because of poor performance over the last couple of them. But, um, you know, only time will tell what exactly happens with that. But uh, then we hop over to some kind of sad news and then some speculation that, you know, hopefully is some positive news. But, um, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is delayed until 2023. And this is coming to you from Cass Marshall over at Polygon, or at least that's the article I pulled it from. And so, this year, we were looking at Gotham Knights, Justice League, or Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and Harry Potter Legacy, all coming out. And so it was looking like a very, very crowded uh, year for WB Games. And so with this kind of being pushed out, and a unspecified time for when we're looking at getting Gotham Knights. Um, you know, kind of with all this happening, there's been a lot of rumors lately that Hogwarts Legacy is looking at a September release date, which I think would be a pretty great time just looking at the gaming calendar. There's not a lot that's releasing, you know, in September or that kind of thing. And so you avoid the like Call of Duties and that kind of stuff that release in November. And you kind of get a couple of months to yourself. So, I part of me, as soon as I saw the Justice League, or the Suicide Squad kill the Justice League being delayed, that was immediately where my head went, is that, okay, they're trying to pave the way for Hogwarts Legacy to have a bit more success, but also, you know, giving the developers a bit more time with, you know, the Suicide Squad game. I'm very curious to see if we end up getting, um, if we end up getting Gotham Knights delayed, just because with it not having a release date, I could, I was scared there, um, I could definitely see that also being pushed into next year, but, uh, you know, we will see on that, but, you know, on a little bit more positive news, we have uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus, uh, as of me reporting this right now, is number 18 on the top selling Switch games. So it has already, and it's like just a week or two of being out, has just been slaying. Like, it is selling like nobody's business, which is kind of exciting because, you know, Game Freak went out and took a different direction that I don't think a lot of people were expecting by doing an open world kind of Pokemon game. I personally haven't gotten to play it, I've seen a lot of people talk about it and that kind of stuff, but, you know, I think that, you know, kind of going back to the Battlefield 2042 news, I think that gaming companies that are trying new things should, you know, like, if it's a positive and it's cool, I think they should get, you know, and, like positive feedback and it seems like you know for the most part people are very excited with the direction that you know this new pokemon game went and so it's super curious to see how you know future pokemon games are going to be affected by this um you know i i hope it continues to do well i might pick it up eventually who knows um i still haven't beat pokemon sword and shield so 
Who knows? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see about that. And then, finally, last but not least, uh, <laughs> Rockstar made the bold statement that yes, after all these years, we are in fact working on Grand Theft Auto 6. A thank you. A thank you. Yeah, you know, I don't think anybody is surprised to hear this. It's... I literally just included it because I thought it was hilarious that they were like, Oh, and for those of you concerned, we are working on GTA 6. Because, like, I feel like a lot of people were, you know, a bit frustrated, maybe, about how long GTA 5 has been going. But, you know, along those lines, it's been making a shit ton of money. And... Do I think that that definitely delayed the fact that, you know, they've been working on GTA 6 super slowly behind the scenes? 100%, because within the same announcement, they also were, you know, throwing out the fact that, oh hey, and for those of you interested, we have a next-gen upgrade that's going to, you know, be doing a bunch of graphics and this and that for, you know, the new uh, consoles. And so it's just like, it's it's kind of hilarious because it's like, okay, okay? Like, A, is anybody surprised that, you know, they're going to keep shilling GTA 5 until the day GTA 6 comes out? And also, it kind of cracks me up how they felt like they need to release a statement that, yes, we are in fact working on a sequel to one of the most highly successful games in history. <laughs> like... I feel like the assumption is if your game does good, you will make a sequel of it. Especially when it's, you know, the fifth game in a franchise. But, uh, yeah, so that's the news that I have for us today. But, uh, I think I'm going to hold on to you guys for just a little bit longer because I want to run in here to this next area. I've, I've caught my- oh, damn it. Why'd I gotta run into somebody? So I caught my Route 116 Pokemon, but I want to go in and I want to catch a Pokemon in that cave. I'm trying to build out, I want that sixth teammate. Oh, Machop, that's fun. Right, Pickle, you are quite leveled. Let's swap over to... Get Spice some levels. I think, if I remember correctly, Spice is going to be super useful in the next gym, so it's time for him to start seeing some action. A little bit more. Oh, a low kick. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. I think Peck is super effective. Yeah, there we go. I remembered right, chat. So now that I got you guys here for this extra little bit of time, I think I'm going to, you know, kind of look back over my news, see if there's anything else I want to talk about. I, um... I feel like the the really big one worth talking about is mostly the um, you know all these very interesting, very exciting. I um, I am a super big fan of um, Until Dawn, less so of a fan of the Dark Picture games that they put out. I felt like the first three that we've had have all relied on super cheap twist endings that kind of ruined the game in my opinion. And so, yeah, I'm super hesitant but also excited for the fourth game in these, you know, next six that we're looking at. I, th I think they, you know, have a lot of really fun titles and that kind of stuff. But, um... Yeah, I I don't know, some of the names, like, it it feels like I have an idea of what it could possibly be, but um, I'm definitely curious to see, like, what some of these, like, I'm really, I'm honestly more excited for the trailers than I am for the games themselves, just because, like, I'm so curious, like, what some of these could be. Oh my goodness, just running into all the Pokemon. I'm just I'm trying to make it through. Alright. I already caught a Pokemon in this area, so you can't come with me. You have to stay. I'm gonna run. I'm trying to I'm trying to get through here safely. Oh my god, and I got the two of them up here too. 
Go away. Nobody wants you guys here. And so, you know, along the lines of, and, you know, just kind of thinking about what many are jokingly referring to as act or uh, acquisition season, I, um, I'm really curious to see, you know, who you guys think's next, you know, who's buying who, um, oh, he's paralyzed, I was like, I was like, why is one of my Pokeballs grayed out? I don't like that. Alright, Pickle and Shadow. That's actually a pretty good team for this. Alright, so, you're going to Water Gun him, and you're just going to Tackle him. I... So, I, I was joking with my wife before Sony released the thing, saying that, you know, they want to launch 10 live service games in, you know, the next four years, which seems absolutely insane to me, because if part of the reason you were buying Bungie is because you want them to kind of show your other studios how, you know, to be successful doing a live service game. In my head, at least, you need them for, like, you know, before production and that kind of stuff. And so you sit here looking and it's like, okay, how many games and how high of a quality are they going to be able to knock out here in you know, the next four years. Like, that That seems kind of crazy to me. And so I'm really curious to see, A, what studios they have working on these games, and B, how long have they been working on them? Because, like, according to them, you know, picking up uh, Bungie, at least partially, for the fact that, you know, they can help with these other games, I think it just makes it really kind of weird that, you know, there's, at least in my head, a strong possibility that some of these games have already been in development for a little bit. Either that or, I, honestly, I think it's just, I don't think 10 live service games is feasible in the next four years. I don't think that there's a shot in hell that they manage to do that. But, you know, along those lines, it kind of begs the question. It's like, okay, you know, we look over at Microsoft. And while I know live service games aren't a big thing for a lot of people, you know, they make a pretty substantial amount of money. And so I wonder, okay, you know, you know, it's, it's that classic question. Oh, how, is, how does Sony answer? How does Microsoft answer? But, you know, I am really curious to see, you know, because we had last Sunday, we had the news story about Microsoft trying to do a uh, Monster Hunter, you know, clone, their own version. That way they can, you know, kind of, you know, start to do that kind of stuff, you know, kind of differentiate Games Pass. And so I think it's going to, at least for me, it's interesting to kind of wonder, okay, what studios and who, what games could they make that could be, you know, live service games that kind of compete because, you know, you sit here and you look at, okay, Sony has Final Fantasy XIV, which is one of the biggest, you know, MMOs on the market. And, you know, you look at Xbox and it's like, okay, their claim to fame would probably have to be, it's like, okay, we, we own Bethesda now, so we technically are in charge of Elder Scrolls Online, even though it's, you know, multi-platform and that kind of stuff. And so even if you just, like, simply said, oh, Elder Scrolls Online cancels out, you know, uh, Destiny, which I think Destiny's bigger. You know, I don't have the numbers or that kind of stuff, that's just me speculating. But I think that, you know, the fact that they're sitting here looking at putting out 10 games, you know, is definitely something that it's like, okay, we need to at least consider the fact that they're going to put out, let's say, a quarter of these, you know, and they're going to do, you know, two to three of them. Like, does Microsoft answer in any way? And, you know, will it be anything worth it? Alright, so we're now in the Rusturf Tunnel. Who are we gonna get? Who are we gonna get? Please be somebody good, please be somebody good. 
God damn it. What the fuck is... Are you kidding me, man? Alright, are you, you're not asleep anymore, right? Like, you're gonna go in and actually fight? God fucking damn it, chat. Alright, so I'm gonna hang out and catch him with you guys. And then, um... Holy shit! Fuck! Oh my god, guys, I... My poor heart could not handle that. Alright, let's just... Get in the ball. Holy crap. Alright, so we got him. Yeah, so, you know, we have wrapped up our news at this point. We've speculated a bit more on the Bungie acquisition. But, uh, yeah, I would really like to hear what you guys think, A, about all these news topics, but B, hey, what a... What do you think is going to be the next studio bot, and who do you think is buying them? I I definitely think that Xbox is probably done for the next little while, just based on the amount of money they've spent the last couple of years. However, if the right deal comes along, I could totally see them, you know, picking up a right price studio. So I don't have anything, so I'm going top of my head, we're naming this uh, Pokemon that does lots of noise, boom. There we go. But uh, yeah, so we're going to save this here, and I'm going to end this recording. You know, I got a lot of Pokemon to grind up now, but you know, I will be doing that later in the week. For now, we are good. Let's hop over to just me and you. What up, chat? How you guys doing? Hey, I appreciate you guys coming in, checking out the news with me, while also watching me, you know, attempt my first ever Nuzlocke. So, let me know for sure what you guys are kind of thinking, what you guys are feeling along the lines of who's going to get acquired next. Leave that in the comments section. But, uh, hey... You should come check these out live, you know, let me know if there are any articles you feel like I missed that I should have been talking about over on twitch.tv slash ruffian. You can't make it and you want to, you know, still catch up on last week's news the next day. Hi, I appreciate you watching over on YouTube over at the Glinting Ruffian channel. If you would like to watch some highlights, we uh, recently just put out a new one over on the Glinting Ruffian TikTok channel. Or, uh, you know, you want to see my tweets, follow me over on Twitter. But I would appreciate if you guys liked, commented, subscribed, followed, all the things on all the platforms. And uh, I will be seeing you guys in the next video. But uh, until then, goodbye now, YouTube.